right here. Sorry if you can't hear me, I'll try and fix it in the editing. I promised you guys a Rope Dark Tech video this weekend, but unfortunately I had to work. So I'm here at my job, construction site as you can see in beautiful Key West. Well, it's beautiful for now. Alright, so on to Rope Dark Tech. Today's tech vlog is going to be consisting of wraps. If you watched my previous tech vlog video, I picked apart seven different elements that I thought make up every tech, every rope dart move that has been demonstrated so far. The first one was shots, but everybody knows how to do a basic shot, so I'm skipping that one and moving straight on to wraps, because not everybody knows the full potential of wraps in my opinion. Now, what do I define a wrap in rope dart? Well, to me, a wrap is any form of two or more beat weave off of a body part. Now I know technically in other arts like glow sticking and poi, wraps kind of consist of what I call bumps and whatnot, but this isn't those arts. This is rope dart and we got to make our own set of classifications. So today's lesson is on wraps, a two or more beat weave. Now, the tech mentality, to me at least, is the goal is to pursue every possibility of a move before you move on to the next one. So I'm going to try and demonstrate that mentality today with something simple like wraps. We're going to start. So, I've already laid out the basics of a wrap. That is the two beat weave. Let's start with the different possibilities of all the body parts. Now, to, in my opinion, there's four possibilities for each body part. Let's start with the legs. Everybody knows the basic leg wrap for the most part. Now this is a right leg outside wrap, meaning I'm starting on the outside of my body to wrap it two beats. Now I can also do that on the left side. This would be a left leg outside wrap. It's a little bit more awkward, but you can do it. On top of that, we have the right leg inside wrap, starting on the inside and going out. Now you can do the same thing to your left leg, inside, out. That's the four possibilities of a basic wrap. You can expand on that, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Next up, we have the arms. You have the right arm outside wrap, the left arm outside wrap, right arm inside wrap, left arm inside wrap, and last but certainly not least, we have everybody's favorite, the neck wrap starting from the left side or the right side. Now, is a wrap limited to two beats? No, that's why in the beginning I said two or more. You can add beats into a wrap. We'll take for instance right now the neck wrap. I'm going to add beats into it, so I have one, two, three, four. It's still a wrap, but I doubled the beats. Now, what if I wanted to turn it into a shot? Well, to me, the simplest way to turn it into shots, if you noticed, every single wrap I've done is even beaded. Two, four, you can do six, you can do as many as you want, depending on how long your string is. But in order to do a shot, you have to hit the odd points of your wrap. For instance, the one beat, or three beat, or five, and so on and so forth. Now, the, perfect, the easiest example of that is everybody's favorite kick, the basic front kick. That's a wrap version of the uh, foot kick. So you have the two beat, one, two, on your foot. Foot's another body part you can do. So in order to turn that into a shot, you just do the one, one, and then shoot it. You can do more, it's a little bit harder on the legs, but an easy way to do that is here. One, two, and shot. You can add, oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't even a shot, that was a wrap, but anyway, so you have one, two, three, and then you can shoot off your elbow. Now your elbow is basically a wrap, just an arm wrap, but instead of wrapping your extended arm, you just fold your arm in and it becomes an elbow wrap. All these different shots can be done on just about any body part. Now what can be done with wraps and combinations? Because as I mentioned in my previous Rope Dart Tech blog, I talked about creating combinations as tricks. Because Rope Dart doesn't really have that many tricks per se. It's more like combinations of simple moves that create one new sequence of moves. For instance, the one I mentioned in the previous one, snake wraps around collar. It's a great move. You have a tie-in or half of your leg wrap to a catch to a shot. But what if I wanted to use wraps as multiple move points in a sequence? Well, one little wrap sequence I 
I came up with not too long ago. Let's see if I can still do this in jeans. You have the beginnings of your leg wrap adding into a neck wrap. Oh, excuse me. So you have the neck wrap. Now you can hold this point right here. You're all nice and tied up. Now what if I wanted to add another point to it? I want to shoot it. Well, I can turn it around, catch on my arm, and shoot it out. Now I know I turned around so you can't really see it, so I'll show you one more time. Let's start with the back. You're going to do your leg wrap, your neck wrap, you have a continuous neck wrap right here. I'm all tied up in the front. As you can see, turn it back around. Now what I'm going to do, I turn around, release it, and catch it on my wrist right here. As soon as I release the neck, I catch it on my wrist to create a second point, and then I can re release, it, bleh, release it into a shot in that direction. Now you're, for the sake of performing, I would stick to these kinds of side points as your main shot focuses, unless you're trying to scare the shit out of your audience. Because as with poi, we have the wall plane because it's the best point for which your audience to see. So by doing stuff out here and whatnot, it creates a better visual aspect for your audience, as opposed to this, just scares the living shit out of them. But anyways, I think that's it for now. This will be my second Rope Dark Tech. On the third one, I'm going to discuss ties, tie, tie in, ties in and ties out and creating knots. I'm also going to lay to rest some issues I've been seeing on the Rope Dart Tech, uh, or Rope Dart forums about the Scorpion Sting. I'll show you what the technical real Scorpion Sting move is. It's a lot simpler than everybody else is making it out to be. The little handstand sequence that everybody tends to say is the Scorpion Sting is actually called the Kicking Mustang because when you go into it, you look like a horse kicking someone in the head. But this, I'll show you the Scorpion Sting. It's based off of wraps and knots. And uh, this is all based on martial arts names and whatnot. I'm not saying that there's one right way or wrong way. I'm just trying to tell you that according to the Kung Fu way, the Scorpion Sting is a much simpler move than everybody makes it out to be. And uh, what I'm going to be doing with this Rope Dart Tech Blogs, the first few series are going to be me issuing these types of thinking, whereas every single aspect of your body should be explored before you try and learn new things. And I'm going to be trying to do that with all the simplest concept for the first like five or six Rope Dart Tech Blogs. After that, then I'll start showing you guys some crazy moves that I've been coming up with based on all this exploration. Like I know Phoenix one, Draco, Arite, whatever you're calling yourself on Facebook now, wants to see my Matrix move. Well, you're gonna have to wait because it's not perfected yet. I can do it, but I had a few ideas to make it even better. And I'll show it to you after I'm done making these first few tech blogs because I want to, I really want to establish a new system of thinking about rope dart and object manipulation in general. Tech boys got it right. You don't just learn a move, you explore ideas. And that's how you get into a tech of some kind of object. But anyways, thanks for watching guys. If you have any requests after these first few rope dart tech blogs are done, please let me know. I would love to demonstrate it. I have been trained in rope dart. I may not be the best, but I do have a lot of knowledge in the basis. Just a little out of shape and not as agile as I used to be. Alright guys.